Connaissez-vous le sens de votre vie Aujourd'hui, nous allons vous donner la clé la plus importante pour pouvoir l'identifier. Donc, dis-nous, Darlene, toi, est-ce que tu as trouvé le sens de ta vie euh, Bishop, je ne vais pas dire que j'ai trouvé le sens. Okay. Je travaille encore là-dessus, mais j'ai trouvé la clé pour pouvoir trouver, en fait, le sens ah, de ma vie. Ah, la clé pour trouver le sens. Et toi, oui. Stéphanie eh bien, donc. moi, je pense franchement que, euh, pareil comme Sister Darlene, euh, comme Darlene, je ne pense pas avoir trouvé exactement quel était le but de ma vie, mais je sais que euh, je vais de gloire en gloire et que mm -hmm. je vais d'étape en étape. Donc, c'est comme si à chaque saison, je, je passe un test oh, wow. qui m'emmène vers une autre étape, qui m'emmène vers un, une autre étape encore, et je vois que je me rapproche ah, de voilà. savoir exactement quel est le but de ma vie. Service. We are so excited to have you, and we are looking forward to seeing you every Friday for the hour service. We welcome you, and let us now prepare our spirits for prayer. How are you guys ready to pray? Amen. Hallelujah. How many guys to war? Get ready to war in prayer. Amen. 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 We're going to war in prayer for young adults because it is a time for us to rise. It's a time for us to stand, and it's a time for us to make a difference. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So we're going to turn to our first prayer, and we're going to find it in John 14, verse 21. John 14, verse 21. Hallelujah. John 14, verse 21 reads, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Praise God. We're going to read that again. And it says in John 14, verse 21, Whoever has my command and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I too will love them and show myself to them. How many of you want the Lord to show himself to us? Amen. How many of you want to declare that we want to show, we want to see God and we want God to show himself to us? Amen. So we're going to war tonight and we're going to declare this for our lives. So the first prayer says, the young adults, the young adults love, love and keep the Lord's commands. And keep the Lord's, Lord's commands. The young adults, the young adults love, love and keeps the Lord's command. And keeps the Lord's commands. The young adults, the young adults love, love, and keep the Lord's command. And keep the Lord's command. God, show yourself in the young adult's life in Jesus' name. God, show yourself in the young adult's life in Jesus' name. And we're gonna say that again. So you guys are at a five. We're gonna go up to a six. The young adults, the young adults love, love, and keep the Lord's command. And keep the Lord's command. God, show yourself in the young adult's life in Jesus' name. God, show yourself in the young adult's life in Jesus' name. We're gonna rise to a full perfection of seven. The young adults, the young adults love, love, and keep the Lord's command. And keep the Lord's command. God, show yourself. God, in, show yourself in the young adult 
adult's life in Jesus' name. In the young adult's life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, God. We honor you. We uplift you, God. We love you. We want to keep your commands. And for this, God, we want you to show yourself. Show yourself in our lives, God. Show yourself in our health. Show yourself in our finances. Show yourself in our careers. Show yourself in our future, God. Show yourself in our relationships, Lord. Show yourself in our families. Show yourself in our siblings, God. Show yourself in our parents, Lord. We are decreeing that you will show yourself, God. And it's through the love that we have for you, God. Because we love you, God. You have promised that you will show yourself to us. Because we keep your commands, God. You said that you will show yourself to us. You will make yourself true in our lives, Lord. We decree and declare that you will be true in our lives. We decree and declare that you will be true in our lives. We declare the truth of the Lord in our lives. We decree the truth of the Lord in our lives. We decree the truth of the Lord in our lives. We decree that it will be true in our lives. That the Lord will show himself. Will show himself. We will show ourselves through love you. We'll show ourselves through honoring you. We'll sh show ourselves to living for you, for uplifting you. We are, we are praying in the name of Jesus that you will show yourself in our lives. We decree that you will show yourself in our lives. We decree that you will show yourself, God. We're praying that you will show yourself, God. Show yourself, Lord. Show yourself, God. Show yourself, Lord. Show yourself in our lives, dear Lord. We decree that you show yourself in our education. That you will show yourself in our education, God. That you will show yourself, Lord, in the workplace, Lord. You will show yourself in the classroom, God. We decree that you will show yourself, Holy Spirit. We pray, God. We're calling on you, God. We need you today, God. We need you to show yourself, Lord. We cannot do it without you, God. We're decreeing that you will show yourself, God, and that we will see you, that we'll have eyes to see you. We have ears to hear you, God, that we will walk with you in the name of Jesus. We will walk with you in Jesus' name. We will walk with you in the name of Jesus, God. Show yourself, God, for us. Show yourself, Lord. Show yourself, God. We decree that we command our souls to love. We command our souls to keep your commands. We command our souls to love. We command our souls to keep your commands, God. We decree that you will show yourselves. You will show yourselves in our lives in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for you are showing yourself. We thank you, God, that you are showing yourself, that you are real more than ever, that you're more real than what we are, God. We thank you, God, that you're showing yourself. And we receive you, Lord. We receive you, God. We receive you, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Praise God. We give God glory because he is showing himself. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Let us clap it up for the Lord. Because he's showing himself. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Let us rise and stand to our feet because nobody's going to fight for ourselves. We have to make a commitment. We have to make a decree that we have to have the fight within ourselves. Amen? Amen. We have to decide that we're going to fight. We have to decide that we're going to war because we want to see God. We want to see a change in our lives. We want to see God come through for us. And there's no one that's going to do it for us. No one's going to do it in the workplace. No one's going to do it at church. No one's going to do it in education. No one's going to do it in the world but the Lord through you and your obedience to God. Hallelujah. We're going to turn to John 14, verse 23 to 24. John 14. Hallelujah. John 14, 23 to 24. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it says, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching." My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We're going to read it again, and it's John 14, 23 through 24. And it says, Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. 
My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us declare this for our life. There's a promise in the word of God, and we have to be active to activate this promise. How many of us are in agreement to activate this promise? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So the prayer goes, the young adults will obey the Lord. The young adults will obey the Lord. The young, the young, <coughs> The young, the young adults will pray the Lord. The young adults will obey the Lord, and the Lord will come and a home with us in Jesus' name. The young adults will obey the Lord, and the Lord will come and a home with us in Jesus' name. So we're gonna say it another. We're gonna say it for the third time. The young adults will obey the Lord, and He shall make a home in us in Jesus' name. So everyone. The young adults, the young adults will obey the Lord. Will obey the Lord, and the Lord will come. And the Lord will come and make a home with us. And make, and make a, a home with us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the young adults, the young adults will obey the Lord. Will obey the Lord, and the Lord will come. And the Lord will come and make a home with us. And make a home with us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the young adults, the young adults will obey the Lord. Will obey the Lord, and the Lord will come. And the Lord will come and make a home with us. And make a home with us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So everyone, close your eyes and clap your hands in the name of Jesus. Father yes. God, we thank you, oh God, because you said in your word that thank you will make a home word. with yes, us, Father Lord, God. Truth. And we thank, thank you, Father God, because you chose us, Father God, as your vessels, oh Lord, your, your vessels you're to bring you honor, Father God. God. We thank you, Father God, because it doesn't matter who you choose, oh Lord. It doesn't matter what we look like. It doesn't matter what we did in our past. But we thank you, Father God, because you choose us, oh God. And we thank you, Father God, because you make a home within us, oh God. We thank you, Father God, because you choose us, Father God, so that we can be representations of Christ, oh God, and that when people look at they see you, oh, Father God. Father God, when the name of Jesus, Father God, we want to walk around and be in our shoes. We want to be vessels of honor, Father God. We want people to look at us and see us, Father God. We're asking you, oh God, to come in our hearts, oh Lord, and make a home within us, oh God. Make a home with us, oh Father God. Abide in us, oh Lord. Abide in us, Father God. Abide in us, Father God. Abide in us, oh Lord. Father God, we open our hearts to you, oh God. We want you to find room in us, oh God. We want you to find us. Us worthy, the Father God. God. The we want you to find us worthy, God. Father God. As they go we want you to live in us, Father God. We want you to find us worthy, so Father God. God. So we take Let away, Father God. We're asking you to take away all the things that don't look like you. All the, you. All the things that tie us down. All the things that tie us to the world, Father God. All the things that become an idol in our lives, oh God. We're asking you to take it away, Father God. Take it away and live in us, Father God. Live in us, Father God. And maybe we be worthy, oh God. Maybe we be worthy, Father God. Maybe we look like every Father God. God. May we look like you, Father God. May we look like you, Father God. The same way your disciples look like you, oh God. We want to look like you, Father God. We want to speak like you, Father God. We want to act like you, Father God. Father God, we want to don't want to look like the world, Father God. We don't want to act like the world, oh God. But we want to be representations of your glory, Father God. We want to be vessels that carry your glory, Father God. We want you to use us, Father God, to the full capacity, oh God. And we don't want you to limit us, oh Lord. But we want you to keep going higher, Father yes, God. God. We want you to guide, Father God. We want you to have your way in us, Father God. God. We want you to have your way in us, Father God. We want you to have your way in us, Father God. We want you to have your way in us, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we want to live our life for you and you alone in the name of Jesus. The young adults want to live their life for you and you alone, Father God. And even if there's things in their life, Father God, that makes them think that they are unworthy, that makes them think that they're not worthy, Father God. To receive you your love, oh Lord. But Father God, we thank you because you love them, God. And you decided to die on the cross for them, Father God. And because you decided to die on the cross for them, Father God. That means that they are worthy of your love, Father God. That means that they are worthy to be a vessel of honor, Father God. That means that they are worthy for you to live in them, Father God. In the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Father God. We trust you, We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, because you want to live in us, oh God. We thank you, Father God, because you want to live in us. We thank you, Father God, because you want to live in us. Thank you, Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. So the next verse is John 14, verse 27. 
the verse says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So again, I'll read the verse. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So the prayer is the young adults, 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 the young adults will have peace. Will have peace that the Lord gives. That the Lord gives. The young, the young adults, the young adults will not be troubled. Will not be troubled or afraid. Or afraid in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The young adults, the young adults will have peace. Will have peace that the Lord gives. That the Lord gives. The young adults, the young adults will not be troubled. Will not be troubled or afraid. Or afraid in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The young adults, the young adults will have peace. Will have peace that the Lord gives. That the Lord gives. That the Lord. Give, that, that the Lord and gives, the young adult and the young adult will not be troubled will not be troubled, or afraid or afraid in the name of Jesus in the name of so Jesus. everyone walk around and clap your hands Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus Father God we thank, thank, thank you for the peace that Jesus, only you can give us Father you God we thank you Father Jesus God for the Christ. peace that thank you Jesus give us God, God. So we thank you Father God because even though we are worrying oh God even though there are things that worry us even though we stay up late at night Father God and we stay up over thanking God you said to be still Father God for I am God you said in your word oh God so we are going to proclaim it, Father God. You said be still for you are God, Father God. You said that we will not be troubled, Father God. You said that you will be beside us, Father God. You said that you are the covenant keeping God, Father God. You never break your promises, oh God. So whatever we are waiting for you on, oh God, whatever we are waiting for you on, Father God, we will continue to wait on you, Father God. We will continue to wait on you, Father God. We will continue to mount up like eagles on your wing, Father God. We will continue to mount up, Father God. We will continue to mount up. Up, Father God, you, Lord, because you give us peace, Father God. Because you give us peace, O Lord. Because you give us peace, Father God. Because you give us the peace, Father God. You said, Do not be afraid, O Lord. You said, Do not let your hearts be troubled, O God. You said in your word that you do not give us a spirit of fear, but you give us a spirit of strength and a sound mind, Father God. So that means in the name of Jesus that I am strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. And I am strong in the Lord and in strength in the name of Jesus. That means that whatever news I hear in the name of Jesus, it will not trouble me because I know what the Lord says in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you for the power of your word, Father God. We thank you, Father God, because you are our peace, oh God. We thank you because that when we are in trouble, we can look our eyes up to the hill to see where our help comes from. Oh God, because our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we shall not be moved because our help comes from you. We thank you, Father God, because we shall not be moved because our help comes from you, Father God. Our help comes from you, Father God. Our help comes from you, Father God. And we can proudly say that our help comes from you, Father God. We can proudly say that our help comes from you, O God. You are our peace, O God. You are our peace, Father God. In the midst of our troubles, Father Father God, in the midst of school, O oh God, in the midst of the stress, O oh God, you are our peace, Father God. You are our peace, Father God. You are our peace, O oh God. And we worship you, Father God. And we worship you, O oh God. And we honor you, Father God. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for everything. We thank you, O oh Lord, for everything. We thank you because you're our peace, O oh God. We thank you because you're our peace, O oh God. We thank you because we do not have to be afraid. We thank you because when we are walking, we don't have to be afraid. We thank you because even though we hear the news, we don't have to be afraid. We thank you because even though we hear our friends talk, we don't have to be afraid, oh God. Because you said it in your word, oh God. You said that you are our peace, Father God. You said that we should not be afraid, oh God. You said that we should not be afraid and our hearts shouldn't be troubled, oh God. Father God, if our hearts shouldn't be troubled, Father who God. We cast our cares, we cast our burdens down at your feet, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we lift the young adults to you, O oh God. Now everything that's bothering them, O oh Lord, everything that they're worrying about, Father God, we lay it down at your altar, Father God. We lay it down at your feet, Father God. We lay it down at your feet, Father God. And we're asking you to take control. And we're asking you to take control, Father God. Take control, Father God. Take control, Father God. We will be still and know that you are God. We will be still and know that you are God, Father God. You are God over the mountains, oh God. You are God over the valley, oh God. Father God, you have the last say, Father God. Whatever man says, Father God, you have the last say, Father God. Even if they say that they will not give it, oh God, you will give it, oh God. Even though they say no, Father God, your word is the last say. So it is always yes, Father God, and amen, Father God. 
Even if the person is waiting for a yes, Father God, and they got a no right now, Father God, we thank you because your word is yes and amen, Father God, because you have the last say, Father God, because you have the last laugh, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for the peace that you bring, oh God. We thank you for the peace that you bring, Father God. We thank you for the peace that passes understanding, oh God. We thank you for the peace that passes understanding, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that everyone that is dealing with anxiety, Father God, everyone that is dealing with stress, everyone that is worried, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We rebuke anxiety in the name of Jesus. We rebuke overthinking in the name of Jesus. We rebuke overthinking in the name of Jesus. We rebuke overthinking in the name of Jesus. And we do agree and declare that the people will have peace in the name of Jesus. The young adults will have peace in the name of Jesus. When it comes to making a decision about college, they shall be peaceful, Father God. They shall feel peace, oh God. God, in the name of Jesus. When it comes to worrying about what grade they get on their test, oh God, they shall feel peace, oh God. They shall feel peace, Father God. Because you will have peace, oh God. It doesn't matter how it looks, Father God. It doesn't matter how it seems, oh God. We thank you because you're our peace, oh God. And we thank you because you give us faith, oh God. And we thank you, Father God, because even though our faith is as small as a mustard seed, oh God, it will do damage, Father God. We thank you for the damage, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God. Oh God, we thank you, oh Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you choose us. We thank you, Father God, for your love. We thank you for your compassion, Father God. We thank you, Father God, because you love them, Father God. The young adults, you love them, Father God. We thank you because you love them, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you think they're beauty and wonderfully made, Father God. We thank you because you call them by their name, O oh God. We thank you because even though they're in a dark place, O oh God, even though they feel like they're in a dark place, Father God, even if they feel like they are alone, Father God, and that no one understands them, O oh God, we thank you because you understand them, Father God. You said in your word that you are close to the brokenhearted, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, because you are close to them, oh God. We thank you because you are close to them, Father God. We thank you because you are close to them right now, Father God. You are their comforter, oh God. You are their shield, oh Lord. You are their shield, Father God. And you are their peace in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that peace be still. We decree and declare that they will be still, Father God. They will be still in the name of Jesus. And every water in their life shall be still in the name of Jesus. And every wind that is blowing against their life shall be still in the name of Jesus. And every problem that they face shall be still in the name of Jesus, Father God. And they shall remember that you have the last say. And they shall remember that you have the last say, Father God. And they shall remember that it is your word, oh God. It is your word, Father God, over the word of men in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your peace, Father God. We thank you for the peace that you give. We thank you for the peace that you give. We thank you for the peace that you give. We thank you for the peace that you give. We thank you for the peace that you give in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare that we bind the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. And we shall not be afraid. We shall not be afraid. We shall not be afraid. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many is excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Amen. If you're on uh, YouTube watching, I want you to type in the chat, say hello. It's nice to see you tonight, amen. Hallelujah. Father God, you are worthy to be praised, oh God. We thank you because we will rejoice in you, oh God. We will rejoice and be glad that you are here in this place, oh God. Father, we pray that you have your way. Dwell mightily in this place, oh God. We honor you. We acknowledge you, oh God. We uplift you, oh Lord God. We magnify you. We just pray that you have your way and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh Lord God. We glorify your name, God. We thank you because we are alive in you. So we are going to rejoice. We're going to clap our hands. We're going to move our feet and we're going to praise his holy name. Amen. Amen. I want you to clap your hands like this. dance and praise him it doesn't matter what comes my way the greater one lives inside of me his name is jesus 
darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken so great are you lord so it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour So we pour out our praise to you only. Sing great are you, Lord. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore.
Can you say that? Here I am to. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh my 
You sound good. Let's do it again. Say, here I am. Here I am too. Yeah. Let's get a little louder. Oh, my God. Oh, God, you're all together. Yeah. With you. Come on, say it. Here I am too. Yeah. Here I am. You're my God. You're all together, Lord. All together. All together. Catch your neighbor, say neighbor. You're looking at a worshiper. Come on, say with a smile on your face. Say neighbor, you're looking at a worshiper. Look at somebody else. Say neighbor, you're looking at a worshiper. Hey, come on. Look at somebody else. Say neighbor, you're looking at a worshiper. Why don't you guys come forward just a little bit? Everybody just come right here. Come on, just come right here. Come on. Come on. Taxi call. Yes. Listen. When I say you're looking at a worshiper, I'm not talking about being the best singer. When I'm talking about being a worshiper, I'm not talking about having the best sound. And when I'm talking about being a worshiper, I'm not talking being a perfect Christian. I'm talking about the fact that I recognize 
that I was created to worship. I was created to worship. My worship is simply a response to the blood that was shed for me on Calvary. I don't have money to pay for that. I'm just responding. You cannot pay your parents for what they've done for you. You cannot pay them for the nine months. You cannot pay them for their sacrifices or their pain. But you can respect them and love them. When I say worship God, I'm not talking about singing. I'm talking about making a decision to live a lifestyle that is pleasing to God. It's making a decision to say, I want to be different. I want to look like God. I want people to feel God's presence when they're around me. In worship, work with obedience. Amen? That's the part most people don't know. Worship, work with obedience. So, what does that mean? God's word is there, and our responsibility is to obey it. God uses me or any other worship leader that comes up here as a vessel or as a vehicle to take you where he needs you to be in this service. And all you got to do is obey. Tell your neighbor, obedience is greater than sacrifice. For all of you in each church or watching online, obedience is greater than sacrifice. So sometimes you hear we say, the presence of God is here. Lift up your hands. Give the Lord a yada worship. What are you going to do? If I say, give the Lord a yada worship, what are you going to do? Amen. Now, yada worship come in three parts. It comes in clapping your hands, which means honoring God. It also comes in waving your hands which means you're just thanking God. I'm sure you, when you're in the service, you see a bunch of people do that. They wave in their hands, but I don't even think they understand what heaven is receiving from that sign. It's receiving a heart of thanksgiving. Amen. But the most important one for me is with my arms wide open. And that means, Lord, I need you. Any of you ever need God? You ever need God? I need you. And I call on him every time I get on the highway. I call on him every time my kids go to school. I call on him every time my husband is out of the house. I call on him every time I'm about to minister. I call on him every time the band get together and they're about to practice. And I say, Lord, give them revelation. Give them creativity. Inspire them. I call on the Lord. But you know you could be in the sanctuary. Instead of doing this, could be doing this instead of doing this you could be doing this instead of doing this you could be waving and saying thank you all those three oh yeah that worship but there's a weapon that most of us don't use it's called Tehillah worship repeat after me say Tehillah worship to heal and worship is to sing to the Lord a new song or sing to the Lord in the spirit. Pray in the spirit and sing in the spirit. And if you don't have it, if you don't speak in the spirit, I pray that you ask the Lord to pour out his spirit on you tonight. Because it is one of the greatest weapons you can have. You see what's funny about the spirit? I could be praying about the argument I had with my husband and nobody has to know that. Because I'm thinking about the argument and I say, I want when I get home that it's over. I want peace. And in the middle of my worship, while I'm saying, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin. Up on that rebo shake it, ba 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 ya karaba shake it, robo yoko robo. You right next to me and you don't know my business. Tell your neighbor sometimes they just gotta mind their business. They just gotta mind their, they gotta mind their business, right? Sometimes they gotta, cause you know you you praying you praying in English, they understand English. You praying Creole, they understand Creole. You praying French, they understand French. You praying Spanish. 
got you. I got you. Don't worry about it. You know, see, Rabba Shaka, Rabba Yeke, Robo Yoko, Robo Sekera, Rabba Baba Shaka, Rabba Baba. You don't have to know what I'm praying about. You don't have to know what I'm asking the Lord about. But I know there's a God that is willing to fight for me, and I'm going to call on Him. Why don't you open your mouth right now and start to heal in the Lord? Rabba Shaka, Rabba Baba Shaka, Robo Yoko, Robo Seke, Rabba Baba Baba Shaka. If you don't have the tongue yet, just keep saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need more of 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 you. You don't have to be afraid because you don't understand. Just declare it out loud. Just declare it out loud. Just shout back the Lord right now. A few more seconds, a few more seconds. Shout out, I want to pray in the spirit. I want to pray in the spirit. I want to pray long prayers. I want to pray in the spirit. I want to pray to you personally. I want to pray in the spirit. I want to pray between me and you. I want to pray in the spirit. Yeah. 
Shepherd! 
Can you honor the Lord right now? Hallelujah. Yes, you Clapping is honoring. Before you return to your seat, can you just tell him you need him? Just place your hand on your heart right now and tell him you want him to fill your heart and fill your soul with his presence. back to your seat. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to your hand for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Great I Am, the Most High God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You all may be seated. Praise the Lord. What an honor to be in the house of the Lord. Can we give the Lord a nice round of applause? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for this time that you've given us right here in your presence to honor you, to glorify you. We pray that those minutes that we're going to spend in the word, may they really be a time of growth, of fellowship. We thank you, we honor you, and we love you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, worship team. All right. All right, guys, we're going to continue with our teaching, right, on uh, uh, Nehemiah. And tonight, I, wanna, I want us to look at some points, uh, important points about Nehemiah, and then we're going to meet together um, as a group, okay? But uh, we're going to begin with the book of... Uh, uh, as we said with the book of Nehemiah, so uh, let me just uh, find a verse here. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, 
our Lord, you are worthy to be praised. All right, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. It says, Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem. So, this um, weekend, since last weekend, we began speaking about it. We got to talk about it this weekend or the rest of this month. We want to talk about the power of a vision. Let us see vision. Amen? The power of a vision. Now, um, what is a vision? Um, in the word vision, there is the word visio, which means to see. So a vision is something that you see. But you don't see it with your physical eyes, but you see it with the eyes of your mind. That's called a vision. So every great invention before they were made, they were, somebody saw it in their mind's eyes first. And then what they saw in their mind became reality over time. They put work to it, they put planning to it, they put work to it, they put perseverance into it, and what they saw in their minds became reality. So what is a vision? A vision is something that you see in your mind that you want to become a reality in the future. Now, um, when you look at Martin Luther King, right, when he had the march in 1963 in Washington, D.C., he had a vision of America. I have a dream that one day uh, young boys and young girls, uh, young black boys um, and, you know, and white girls, they will, uh, you, you know, they will be united together to the bonds of brotherhood. So he had that dream, he had seen little children, black and white, holding hands together and walking as part of the new America that he envisioned. And it was in his mind. Um, and that dream has partly become reality today. I don't want to say it has become, um, I don't want to say it has become fully reality, uh, but it has become partly reality. Um, you know, the part, uh, you know, part of it has become reality because the laws of the land has changed and, uh, uh, and the law integrates many areas of society that was segregated in the past. So almost every public institution is integrated now. Our schools are integrated. Um, you know, restaurants are integrated. Buses are integrated. So you see black and white sitting ne next to each other in most institutions. And of course, the last one to be integrated, and we should sh say that to our shame, is the church, right? Um, the church... Uh, Martin Luther King had said 11 o'clock in America is this Sunday morning at 11 o'clock is the most segregated hour um, in America. Um, so in that sense, uh, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. I think churches are more integrated now than they were in the past. The church is moving. Uh, uh, but I think at the level of social life, in terms of friendship and family, the United States is still very much segregated. Uh, you know, people, you know, in their circle of friends, by and large, they hang out with people who look like them, um, and they marry people who look like them. So it's very, very interesting, uh, very interesting that, um, I think I had said that 
in all of the countries in the Americas, the United States has been and is still the most segregated countries in the Americas. When you go to countries like, begin with um, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Brazil, Mexico, most countries in Latin America, you, have, you find people of different shades of color. Do you realize that with Hispanics, you find black, you find a little bit that or that, you know, until you find all the shades from black all the way to white. Most countries in Latin America, um, even in Haiti where we don't have a lot of whites anymore, but you still find the people called mulattoes in Haiti. We have three classes in Haiti. For example, we have the whites, we have the mulattoes, we have the blacks. Donc ce qu'on appelle les mulattes en Haïti. But in the United States, the mulattoes almost don't exist. In the United States, you're black or you're white. Uh, so you don't really have those shades uh, that exist. So in that sense, I would want to say this, America is still at work. Where the law forces people to be integrated, they are integrated. But in the areas where they are not forced to be integrated, they are still very much like, uh, you, know, uh, you know, segregation is still very much present. Um, like in churches, in social life, and in family life. So, um, you know, it's very interesting that a uh, man marrying a man and a woman marrying a woman has become more popular than a, than a black marrying a white. Isn't that bizarre? <laughs> that, has still, that has become way more popular in the United States than, a, than interracial marriages. So interracial marriages to a good extent is more taboo than any other type of marriage in the United States. So in that sense, it, it means that at the level of the heart, there is a work that is still need to be done. Um, so uh, Martin Luther King's vision, so that's why I said his vision of uh, black and white holding hands together as part of the new America, um, it's been partly done where the law has obligated that to be done. Uh, but I think there is a work that still be done at the level of the heart. And... Um, and I would put that right on the shoulder of the church because it's really the church that has the capacity uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit to preach the word and to get to, get to the heart. Anyway, so let's close that parenthesis. But the most important thing is um, today, um, you know, many years later, almost 60 years later, 60 years later, um, we are definitely in a better position in society than we were in the past and it started with a vision so somebody who had something in his mind and that vision little by little it becomes a reality now um, so what is a vision a vision is a picture of the future in your mind it's a picture of the future that you have in your, in your mind now there are two things that are important about a vision that you need to know a great vision has two important characteristics. Number one, a great vision needs to be clear. A good vision needs to be clear. Um, if it's not clear in your mind, then it's not, it's not gonna be clear for other people. The, fir the, 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 the first and the most important characteristic of a leader or anybody else um, who have people looking at them uh, and looking up to them is to make sure that they have clarity of vision. Martin Luther King's vision was very, very clear. By the time till today, we're still saying, I have a dream. We can still see, uh, you know, young black boys, uh, you, know, uh, you know, black boys and white boys and girls, young people, black and white, holding hands together. I mean, we can still see that 60 years later, we're still quoting those lines. The image that he gave us many generations later, those who were not there when the march happened, still um, are repeating what was said in the march, the vision that he had. We can still picture it in our mind. Get the number one stock pick we of the day. No research, credit card when he info, or getting out of bed. So that's how clear it was. The clearer the vision is, the easier 
it is to communicate that vision. Nehemiah had a clear vision when the king asked Nehemiah, what do you want? Nehemiah was very clear, send me to my father's, uh, send me to Jerusalem, uh, the city of my father's, and let me rebuild it. So the vision was very clear, rebuild the city of Jerusalem. Um, it wasn't maybe Jerusalem, maybe Babylon, maybe Palestine, maybe somewhere else. It was very clear. That's where I wanted to go. And when I get there, that's what I'm going to do. We're going to rebuild that city. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to do it by rebuilding the walls of that city. So the vision is very, very clear. Um, if you want to accomplish great things in life, one of the things that is very important is that your vision has to be clear. Um, uh, you know, often when God gives us ideas, they may simply come with a feeling, with an intuition, I think, with a thought, I think that God wants me to do this. I feel that God wants me to do this. So it starts with a feeling and it starts with a thought. But over time, we're going to need to go into prayer like Nehemiah. Um, he took four months in prayer. And by the time that he came out of that prayer room, he had a clear vision of what uh, the Lord wanted him to do. So when the king asked him the question, he answered very clearly. Some of you, there are things that God has asked you to do. You have a feeling of what God wants you to do. You have an, a sense of what God wants you to do. You have an idea of what God wants you to do, but you're not clear. And the clarity of vision, you get it and you get it in prayer. Uh, uh, at the very least, the basic clarity. Now, it is true over time. The more you labor in the vision, the clearer the vision becomes. It is true. But at the same time, you need a basic clarity to begin with. When we started Tabernacle of Glory, the first task that I had to do was to go in prayer and get a clear vision of what kind of church that God wants us, wanted us to build. And um, today, we got we in 2024, at the end of this year, uh, you know, by the time we get to December, well, let, next year it's going to be 20 years, but 20 years later, the things that I, I had written on paper 20 years ago, that's what Tabernacle of Glory has become today. A church of prayer, a church of worship, a church of the word, a church of discipleship where we meet in small group, a church of evangelism where we go out and win souls for Christ. Um, you know, um, you know, a, a multicultural church where we have people of different, different, we have different services in different languages and different people and different um, nationalities in different countries in the world that are part of this ministry but it all started 20 years ago with a vision that God had given but it took going in prayer for that vision to clarify one of the things that um, I realize is that uh, um, over time when God, God often gives you visions by bits and pieces you don't get all the vision at once you get bit and pieces and at some point, for me, the vision of Tabernacle of Glory, um, it really started, you know, you know, since I was, I don't know, 18 years old or so, et cetera. When I used to go to your college here, I would walk uh, from your college to where I live in St. Albans. Um, and during those times, I would be singing and praying, and I would get vision of what bits and pieces. Now, at that time, I didn't know I, didn't know I was looking at Tabernacle of Glory. But when it was time for us to start Tabernacle of Glory, um, I was close to my 30s, so it was like 12 years later, when it was about time for me to start Tabernacle of Glory, and it was time for me to put the vision down, and I went in, I went in prayer, all the Lord did was all the bits and pieces that he had been giving me since I was 18 years old, he said, start putting all of the bits and pieces together. Then I realized the Lord was preparing me since I was 18 years old for something that he was going to have me start when I would be 30 years old. So what I'm saying is that there are some of you here, uh, you know, as young people, there are things that God is flashing in your mind. You just have those feelings. You just have those flashes. You just have those desires. You just, you're just like, man, I, I wish I were, if I, 
you know, if it were me, I would have done it that way. If I have that opportunity, I would have done it this way. Don't just take those little pieces for granted because in reality, God is showing you certain things. At some point, all of that is going to come and it's going to get crystallized. Does that make sense, guys? Um, so take, take those things, just write them down, put them somewhere. One day, all of it is going to come together and the vision is going to be clear. And without that clarity, there is not much that you can do. So a good vision, the first characteristic of a good vision is that it is very clear. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2, the Lord said to Habakkuk, write the vision down and make it plain. Write the vision down and make it plain. That they may run who reads it. Write the vision down and make it plain. Make it clear. Make it accessible. Uh, make it palatable to everybody. So your vision has to be clear and it has to be plain. All right? Good. Now, that's very important. Now, while we are saying this, I said this from the point of view of ministry, but let's look at it from the point of view of families. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to begin with the brothers in this place, especially the brothers that we have in this place. You got to have a clear vision for your life, generally, and you got to have a clear vision for your family. Um, in fact, before I had a vision for the ministry, I had a vision for my family. So when I, when, I, when I met Pat, I was about 23 years old, and at that time, I already had a clear, I'm going to have a vision for the church when I was 30. But I had a vision for the family and where I wanted to go. By the time when I met with Pat and I was 23 years old, I was able to present that vision to her. Here's where I'm headed in the future. Here's where I think that the Lord is going to go with me, what he's calling me to do. Do you find yourself in that vision? Here's what I think in terms of raising children. Here's what the, uh, the idea that I'm thinking in terms of marriage. Here are my thoughts. What about you? What are your thoughts? So I had a vision for a fam my family before I even, had, seven years before I had a vision for the church. Are, are you guys with me? So it's very, very important, the brothers who are in this place, that you have a vision. You need to have a vision before you even have money. Are you guys with me? Sometimes you may not have the money, but at least you have a vision. So at that time, uh, you know, uh, 23 years old, you know, I was, you know, I was in college, didn't have a job. Uh, you know, I didn't have money, but I had a vision. When I met with my wife, she understood that I was going somewhere. I had a vision in life. So that's very, very important, brothers who are in this place. It's very, very important that you, uh, that you, uh, that you have a vision because God has called you to be the leader of your family. It's pretty difficult to follow a leader who does not have a vision. It's frustrating to follow a leader that does not have a vision. Does that make sense? All right, sisters in the place, the same thing too. I mean, you need to have a vision for your life as well. Um, uh, in fact, um, if you don't have a vision, you don't, even, you don't even know if the person that you're meeting is going to be the right fit. So then you're going to need to have a vision by the time that we meet so we are able to compare notes on our visions. Okay, that's the person that I'm going to be connected to in life and the two of us are going to become one. <laughs> if the two of us are become one, we better be clear about <laughs> where we're headed. Because how do we become one when you're heading east and I'm heading west? Are you guys with me? So it's very, very important we take time. So sometimes people are so concerned about, uh, you know, being in a relationship, uh, you know, having somebody in their lives when the basic things are not done in life. Um, I don't know how many times that you see people who get um, divorced and then they, they're going to get divorced, and they say incompatibility. Okay, so we are incompatible in life. We are in two different worlds. So that's very, very important. What is a vision? The vision's got to be clear. Um, you know, what is, our, um, what is our conception of family? Um, how do we think we're going to raise our children? Uh, what is our conception of how are we going to handle money? Um, how are we going to handle responsibility in the home? Uh, so all of these things, there's got to be a clear vision of where you want to be in life and to make sure that the person that you're working with 
um, making sure that's somebody um, um, who's connected with that kind of vision. Does that make sense? Okay, that's really, really clear. Otherwise, it creates a major problem. The vision has to be clear, whether it's for family, whether it's for your personal life, for family, for ministry, um, that's very, very important. So the, uh, um, the second thing that an important characteristic of a vision is that not only a vision has to be clear, number two, a vision, a good vision has to be audacious. A good vision has to be audacious. Uh, when I say, uh, when I say audacious, if you, I mean, if, 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 if you don't have a vision that's challenging, if you don't have a vision that sounds crazy, you most likely are not going to go very, very far. A good vision needs to sound crazy. Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple, used to say that the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who usually do. The people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who usually do. You know, one time, uh, Steve, uh, one time, Bill Gates was working in his mother's garage and he was, uh, you know, playing around with, uh, uh, you know, uh, with, with, with a computer. And at that time, it wasn't computer yet. I mean, it was early, early versions. And he was putting some things together. And his mother said, what are you doing? He said, I'm about to change the world. And guess what? He did. By the time, uh, you know, um, Microsoft came out with Windows, this thing found itself in every single computer in the world, and that changed the life of men forever. But since he was a young man, he dreamt about changing the world. He was crazy enough to think that he can change the world, and he did. So never think that your vision is too crazy. The people, normal people don't change the world. It's abnormal, crazy people who do. Are you guys with me? Normal people don't change the world. Normal people don't have a big impact. Normal people live without a trace. It's people who are crazy, who come up with crazy ideas and believe them and work with them and at them. Those are the people who end up changing the world. You look at uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a crazy man. He sounded crazy. When the king asked him, what do you want? He said, send me back to my uh, uh, father's house sent me my, to the land of my ancestors so I can rebuild the city of Jerusalem. But the city of Jerusalem had been broken and it was burned down for 140 years. That place had been burned down for 140 years and the people who were living in the place didn't rebuild it. What makes you think that you were born outside and you're going to come and you're going to rebuild what was not done in 140 years and you think within a few months you're going to do it? I mean, it's like, it's the craziest thing, you know, uh, it's been there over a century. The people who live in the land haven't been able to do the job and you were born outside of the land. You had never been in that country and you think by yourself within a few months you're going to do it. He was crazy enough to believe that and guess what? In 52 days he did it. So in reality, it's people who are crazy who accomplish great things. Normal people don't accomplish great things. It's crazy people who accomplish great things. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's crazy people who accomplish great things. So when God gives you a, a, a vision, um, even if it looks crazy, don't be, um, uh, you know, don't be discouraged by that. I told you the example of Tabernacle of Glory when we started the church and it was about, um, the church was about, we started the church with 12 people. And I said that Tabernacle of Glory is going to grow to 25,000 people. A pastor friend of mine called me and rebuked me and said, you know, you're making your people re repeat nonsense. It's one, f it's one thing for you to believe it, but it's another thing for you to make, you know, a lot of people stand in front of you and say that the church is going to grow to 25,000 people. We, we, I mean, he said, if, if you said 1,000, I would have believed. If you said 2,000, that would have been acceptable. But 25,000, and you have people repeating this? So he had to call me aside and say, you know, as a brother in Christ, I got to talk to you because I can see you're out of your mind. Are you guys with me? Uh, but I told him, that's my dream, that's my vision, and that's what is going to become a reality. Does that make sense? 
All right? So Tabernacle of Glory right now is well over 25,000 people. Just in HP alone, we have 18,000 people in HP. And it's, are you guys with me? Just in HP alone, we have 18,000 18, people in HP. And it's usually half of the church. It's usually half of the church who participates in HP. So Tabernacle of Glory is well over 30-something thousand people right now. Uh, we usually say 25,000 just to be conservative, but we are way, way over 25,000 people. But it started with a crazy idea. Does that make sense? It starts with a crazy... We were saying 25,000 people when we were 12 people. So good dreams are, good dreams are crazy. And when you say that Nehemiah was crazy, Bill Gates was crazy when he started, Steve Jobs was crazy, Martin Luther King dreaming of a new America in the 1960s where, you know, whites, black and white would hold hands together and an integrated society. It all started crazy. When the Toussaint Louverture with the Haitian Revolution, when Toussaint Louverture and all of the guys, Jean-Jacques Dessalines, etc., they thought about a country in the world where everybody would be free. That was crazy. At that time, there was no country in the world where everybody was free. That did not exist. Um, certainly not any country where, you know, you, know, you had no, no republic in the world where everyone was free. But they dreamt about it, and it became a reality. So good visions have two characteristics. Number one, they are clear. Number two, they are crazy. They are audacious. You have to have a clear and crazy vision to have great things, to do great things for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? So in your personal life, um, start thinking about these things in your personal life. Um, uh, uh, you know, be clear about it and be crazy. But as I said, visions are not something that you, you it's not something that you concoct. It's not something that you make up, you come with it. In reality, visions are more given to you. Um, more and more they are given to you. So you're going to need to start seeking the face of God. And the more you seek the face of God, the more God starts to reveal things to you. But one thing is very, very clear. If, if it's God who's going to reveal it to you, it's going to be crazy. That's for sure. Because God, God has to leave room for him to operate. God will never give you a vision that you can accomplish by yourself. If he did, what, what, what would be the point of him being in your life? God will never give you a vision that you can accomplish by yourself. He's always going to give you a vision that's crazy, a vision that where you have to say, Lord, if you don't do it, it's not going to be done. Then when you have something like that, then you know you have a vision from the Lord. Okay? So, um, so we're going to challenge, uh, challenge tonight. I'm going to give you two challenges tonight. I'm going to begin with the second challenge. The second challenge is going to be to spend time in the presence of the Lord and start asking the Lord um, to reveal to you his plan for your life. Because his plan got to become your vision. His plan got to become your vision. If your vision is not his plan, it's a waste of time. It's not going to happen. So your vision's got to be his plan. So it's a good time for, uh, for, uh, 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 you know, for us. Um, especially the young people, people that we have here, teenagers that we have here. Your, uh, um, your years, your teenage years, your young adult years, your 20s, your 15, your years of 20. Those are the most important years in terms of vision. By the, by, the, by, the, by the time that you're out of your 20s, you should be set on your vision for life. I mean, that should become clear. By, you know, in your, in your teens, you're still looking for things, etc. You're getting some senses of what you may want to do, etc. By your 20s, your vision's got to be clear in life. Okay, what is it that you're going to do? You've got to be totally clear about that. Because by the end of your 20s, uh, I would say, um, you know, uh, yeah, by the end of your 20s, um, end of your 20s, uh, uh, you know, that needs to be clear and you need to start working at it. And I would say ideally, ideally uh, before 25. 
You see, I would say the first 25 years of your life is very much preparation years. You know, you're, you're figuring out who you are the first 25 years of your life. Between 25 to 50, you need to be working on your vision. I mean, that vision needs to be manifesting. By the time that 50, you got 25 years to be really working at that vision for that vision to manifest. Are you guys with me? Yeah. Beyond 50 now, the vision's got to be clear where other people can see that you already have a fruit. Between 50 and 75, you're pouring in the life of other people. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. All right, between 1 to 25, you need to figure out what is it that God has called you in life to do. By the time you're 25, you're out of college, you this and that and the other, you start working on that vision. You got 25 years really to work on that vision and to show something for what you have, for what you have done. Does that make sense? Okay, now, by the time that you're 50, it's no longer what you can do by yourself. It becomes a lot, okay, how am I going to invest in other people? The things that I have learned in the past 25 years of my life, success without su a successor is failure. Does that make sense? Success without successors is failure. So once you, once you hit 50, uh, you got to start thinking legacy. All the things that I've accomplished in the past 25 years of my life, how do I make sure they don't get lost? And now, legacy has to do with investing in other people, building institutions, investing in other people, um, if it's church, if it's universities, if it's books that you're writing, if it's that, it's that and the other, all the lessons that you have learned, the contribution that you have made, you have 25 years to make sure, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, to make sure you build those institutions and you invest in other people around the things that you yourself have learned in life. Beyond 75 now, you're chilling in life. You're cruising. You're there, but you're not working so hard in life. You're there. Are you guys with me? Now you're, you're enjoying your work. You got other people who are, you know, you become like a Warren Buffett. You're giving interviews over the radio and television. You're guiding other people, but you're not working so, uh, um, so hard. You're more at the level of a counselor and um, other people that you're, you're investing. But even with investing, you're more at the level of counselor at this time. Does that make sense? Life has seasons. Life has seasons. And um, you can miss your season. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can miss your seasons. You can miss your season in each season of life you know between 1 to 25 you should be doing certain things between 25 to 50 you should be doing certain things between 50 to 75 you should be doing certain things between 75 and uh, however many years the Lord's going to give you 100 100 something years you'll be doing something else but it, it, it uh, you, you cannot be missing your uh, you cannot be missing your season you can't be 25 years old and you're behaving like a 75-year-old man or woman. Yeah, you can't be 25 and be sleeping and being at home like somebody who's retired. You're in the wrong season. Does that make sense? You're in the wrong season. So there is a time in your life, that's when you need to be working hard. That's when you need to be sleeping those sleepless nights. If you're going to go to school, you're going to get a degree, you're going to get this, you're going to get that, you're going to be working on your business, you're going to be building something, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do the other. Does that make sense? So you cannot be at each time, you can't, you can't be 25 and also want the privilege of somebody who's 50. You're going to end up becoming a thief, a robber. Does that make sense? I see that happen in ministry, uh, ministry right now. You see that all the time. Somebody who's 25 years old who's just starting to preach and that person wants to be treated like somebody who's 50 years old and 60 years old and has been in the ministry for 25 years and 35 years. Now, that person wants to live in the same house, drive the same car, be in the same place, but do you have 25 years? 
that person for them to have what they have legitimately they worked for that for 25 years how do you expect to have the same thing when you just came here then otherwise you're gonna rob people are you guys with me and sometimes people in this generation they can make demands they can make demands that they are not in the season for there was a um, there was a preacher that I invited at Tabernacle of Glory one time, right? I invited him at Tabernacle of Glory. Young preacher, well known. He was recommended by somebody else, a close friend of mine, who was very, uh, who's very well known. I don't, I don't want to say his name. Um, and he was recommended. He said, that's a good young man. You should invite him to come and preach. So because the person who invited him is somebody who's very well known in the um, Christian community internationally and gave me the recommendation, I said, yes, I'll invite him um, to preach. When I invited him to preach, the time that I, I invited him, um, um, to preach, he said, the only way that I can make it um, is that I have to fly private. Okay, so you uh, you got to get me on a private jet to get you in, to, to get us in. Okay, no problem. I, I don't remember how much it was cost. I don't know, maybe about $10,000, etc. We flew him on a private jet to come and preach at one of our events. And he showed up late. So I paid a private jet for you to come and preach and you showed up late? When he came and pre preaching uh, 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 an event, I mean, he preached that night, and that night he showed up. So, he showed up so late that day where we were having the event, they ended up turning off the light on us before the event was over. So the next morning when he came, he was gonna preach. I said, "Brother, you're not gonna preach until we have a talk." And you know, I had a conversation with him. You know, I'm like, I can't be flying you private and you show up late, showing up late to my event. Okay, uh, and that, but anyway, make a long story short, that was the, the last time that he preached for us. Not because he couldn't preach, but because he, was, he wasn't disciplined. You see, he was asking for privileges that his character had not grown enough to handle. He was asking for a privilege, but when you got him the privilege, he couldn't answer them. He couldn't. He couldn't handle the privilege. Because I don't mind if you're showing up with a commercial jet, you show up, you're flying commercial, and you tell me there's a problem, you show up late. I mean, I understand that. But if I'm flying you private, you got to be on time. But the problem is, here is, here is a guy, um, you, you, sometimes you can be asking for privileges where you don't have character enough to handle. And at that time, what it does, it plays against you. Are you guys with me? Yeah. And, and by the way, he's the only, you know, uh, 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 you know, I've, you know, I've dealt with, uh, I've dealt with very well-known preachers um, here in the Haitian community and the American community. None of them ever show up late to my events. Are you guys well? In fact, most of them are always early and they're waiting. You know what? Because over the years, those men have developed the character for what they are doing. Sometimes people can be ahead of their seasons in life. They are asking for things that they don't have the character enough to handle. And all it does is that it plays against you. Are you guys with me? So, uh, life in, uh, uh, there are seasons in life between 1 to 25, there are certain things that you should be doing and there are privileges that you should have. Between 25 to 50, you'll be doing something else and it accompanies a certain other level of privileges. Somebody who's 25, 75, they have 50 years behind them. A career of 25 years and 50 years behind them. Are you, so there are certain things that they have and there are privileges that they there are privileges that they have. Are you guys with me? Somebody who's 75, that's something else, right? Um, so um, you, you're going to find yourself in Miami, um, you know, you know, in Miami, it is not rare. I mean, you find those people, I mean, if seven years old, 75 years old people, and you see that they're driving the latest, I don't know, they're driving Bentleys, they're driving this, they're driving that, they're driving the other. 
So you see a man who's 70 years old or 75 years old, he's driving a Bentley, he's driving a car that costs $250,000, and you're a young man, you're 25 years old and 30 years old, you want to drive the same car. Now, unless somebody left some heritage money for you, or you have some exceptional doors that open for you, uh, you know, a lot of people in order to do that, some of them end up doing the wrong thing. Because you simply haven't worked enough in life that gives you that privilege. Or maybe um, even if you're a young professional, um, even if you're a young professional, you're making 200000 you're a young professional, maybe you're a you're, you're, you're young lawyer, etc. You're making $200,000 a year. But you're going to go, you're, making two, you're a young lawyer or a young doctor, you're making $200,000 a year, and you get a car for $250,000? You're going to be poor. All you're going to be paying is that car bill. Whereas the guy who's 70 years old, he's probably got a couple of million dollars invested. He's really paying the car note out of the interest. Are you guys with me? They work for 25 years. They work for 40 years. For, you know, they got enough money. Or they're paying that car. That car is not coming. You know, it's coming out of the interest of their investment. So it's not going to go anywhere. Why? Because they're in the season of life to do that. So I've realized, so sometimes people make mistakes of seasons um, of life. Sometimes people, um, you know, um, somebody can be uh, 20, 25, 30 and they want to relax like somebody who's uh, retired or somebody, uh, or they can be young, they want to be the privileges of, 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 of somebody else, you know? So, um, so that's, I, I, I talk to the young people, I don't talk to the older crowd. If it were an older crowd, I would have talked differently because there are also, <laughs> there are also 75 year old men who think that they are 25. They want to behave like they're 25. They're checking girls out, they're, you know, like, you know, they're 25. And then that's a different story and that's a different problem, you know. And then they get sick. If you've been get tension, you've been get bagay, and they really think a 25-year-old girl is going to spend her rest of her life taking care of mungi get tension, sick bagay, etc. So some, some people are older too and they are crazy. <laughs> Amen. Anyway. Father, we bless your day. We thank you for this time. Help us to understand the seasons of our lives so we don't mess up the seasons. We don't make mistakes, Father God. We don't um, help us to do the right thing at the right time. You say that there is a time for everything. Help us to discern the season, the right season, and do what's right at the time that you have set for us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Um, here's what I'd like us to do, guys, for us to, uh, 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 to close. Talking about vision, right? Talking about vision. We have this service here, the Friday night service. We seem to have uh, definitely ups and downs in this service. Let's take the next 30 minutes, I guess 27 minutes or so. We can take the next 30 minutes. Let's break into groups. And let's say, let's come up with a... Next, let's, let's work with a vision for next year. By next year, um, what do we want this service to look like? The young, the service for the young people here, the student service. By next year at this time, 2025, when you dream of that service, what do you dream? Um, dreaming of that service, uh, 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 Let's think of that service making an impact in New York. What is that service going to look like to make an impact in New York? So let's break into groups and let's come up with a vision, okay, for this service on Friday night. How can this service, guys, um, in Queens, in Queens alone, in Queens alone there are about 2.5 million people here, Right? And a good amount of those people are young people. It wouldn't amaze me to see in the 2.5 million people that um, about a million of them are young people. So in this area here in Queens alone, you will easily find about a million 
young people here. And those people are dying without Christ. Those young people, they are dying. They are living without Christ. They are dying without Christ. And some of them are trying to find satisfaction in all kinds of crazy things in life. But we know about Jesus. So how can we um, reach out to those young people that we have right here? Hundreds of thousands of them who are around us. Okay? So how can Friday night, the student ministry, be a ministry that reach out to young people? And what would that look like? Uh, by next year okay so let's break into groups of four let's move the chairs let's stand up and let's uh let's fix the chairs and let's come up with some ideas let's let's stand up and let's uh uh let's fix the chairs uh, let's turn the chairs into round we'll do uh, small groups and then we come up with some ideas thank you all right All right, praise the Lord. Okay, we'll leave some time of discussion.
Thank you to everyone who joined us online tonight. This concludes our service. We look forward to seeing you next week.